It's a through hiker's true nightmare. Honestly, it's probably any hiker's nightmare or any human being's nightmare. In 2019, four hikers were attacked and threatened by another hiker. Two of the hikers were physically harmed and one of the two hikers unfortunately passed away from the attack. This is the story about Ronald Sanchez Jr. Ronald Sanchez Jr. was a 16-year army veteran who had done three different trips to Iraq. He decided to hike the Appalachian Trail for the sense of gaining calmness from the woods and nature and sound and he had some post-traumatic stress symptoms that he wanted to deal with while on the Appalachian Trail. Just like many of us through hikers, we essentially go out to gain peace and quiet from the real world. Sanchez decided to start the trail a little bit earlier because he knew that he would have to take it a little bit slower and stay at a steady pace due to some injuries he had on his shoulders and knees that were operated on on numerous occasions. In fact, hikers did give him the trail name Stronghold because he was able to overcome obstacles during his hike. By the time he reached Franklin, North Carolina, his injuries on his shoulder and knees had bothered him significantly, and so he decided to take a little bit of a break at Gooder Groves Hostel in Franklin, North Carolina. After a while, he decided to move on and made it all the way past Damascus, Virginia. On the day of attack, Sanchez decided to take camp with three other hikers. One female hiker named Kirby Morrill, who he had previously met when she had some problems with a bear taking her food. That evening they took camp and eventually were joined by James Jordan. James Jordan was known among the other hikers as Sovereign and he was known to be a little bit off the deep end. As the night went on, his mental stability deteriorated significantly. Jordan talked to himself, played music, spoke incoherently, as well as talked to his dog throughout the night. He also started walking around the others' tents, telling them how he was going to kill them in different types of ways. One way was to pour gasoline all over their tents, and he also told them the reason why they deserved to die. By midnight, James Jordan decided to leave camp momentarily and that is when the four hikers decided to get away from James Jordan and started to pack up their belongings. As the hikers were packing up, Jordan returned and started to brandish his knife to the hikers. He also asked them, why are you hunting me? He started to chase two of the hikers northbound, but eventually gave up about a quarter to a half a mile in, and then returned back to the camp. The two hikers did manage to hike four miles until they were able to reach a road crossing where they were able to call 911. Meanwhile, Jordan went back to the campsite where Sanchez and Morrill remained. As they were preparing to leave, Jordan accused Sanchez of having hit him with a rock as well as talking about people trying to hunt him down. Sanchez denied hitting Jordan with a rock and Jordan decided to advance on Sanchez with a knife. The female hiker, Morrill, had already started moving on but then turned around to check if Sanchez was following her and that is when she saw James Jordan attack Ronald Sanchez and stabbing him in the upper chest as well as in the stomach. Sanchez fell to the ground and that is when James Jordan decided to run after Morrill. Because she had a 30 pound backpack it was hard for her to get away from James Jordan. He eventually caught up to her and when he confronted her from the front she fell to her back and James Jordan went on top of her and stabbed her at least nine times as well as caused serious injuries in her face all over her arms and her body. He also began beating her on the side of the head and that is when she started to play dead in order to have some sort of hope for James Jordan to stop. He did eventually stop, got up and started standing there and checking whether Morrill was still alive probably. She said in some of the court documents that she tried to hold her breath and tried not to move in order for him to truly believe that she had passed away. Once James Jordan was convinced that Morrill had passed, he suddenly left. He went to get away to find his dog. Morrill herself didn't even know how much she was injured and as she was 
getting up, she went southbound to look for help. She knew that there was a campsite a few miles down where there were other hikers, and that is where she came upon two other hikers who helped her hike another six miles to get to be able to contact uh, emergency services. Three hours later, James Jordan was arrested by a sheriff's department tactical team. It was because Ronald Sanchez was able to activate an emergency signal on his cell phone before he passed away that they were able to connect ping sites through different towers to locate the attack site. Once they got there, they found Sanchez's body as well as Jordan's dog. The dog is actually what led them to James Jordan. They saw that his body was covered in blood as well as his shirt and they arrested him. This is truly a very, very sad story and as I said before, it is a complete nightmare of any sort of through hiker. Whenever we decide to tell our family that we were going to hike or do a through hike, the first thing that our family members ask is, what about safety? Aren't you worried somebody's gonna attack you? And it is because of cases like the one with James Jordan and Ronald Sanchez that you do have to be considerate at times. The story is extra sad because people knew of James Jordan as being a peculiar person. In fact, people and other hikers warned other hikers on the Far Out app about James Jordan. Just three weeks prior, James Jordan had actually been arrested for brandishing a machete as well as a knife in front of other hikers. He was arrested and booked for certain charges, but eventually he was released and went back to trail only to three weeks later attack Ronald Sanchez and causing his death. James Jordan has been recently found not guilty by reason of insanity, but he is being held at medical and mental facilities in order to ensure his mental wellness and to not release him until he would be mentally well. He has continuously proclaimed that he feels sorry about the attacks and then he wishes he could take it back, but obviously that doesn't take anything back and hopefully he will never be released.